What's up, vapers? Thanks for checking out Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Hastur RTA. All right, guys, so the random question of the day is, does the packaging matter? Do you guys really pay attention to what a box looks like for a particular device? It does it matter to you. I'm going to say yes as far as a marketing aspect is concerned because, honestly, you want your product to really stand out from the crowd when it comes to sitting on a vape shop shelf or on pictures online and stuff like that. You just really want it to stick out in someone's brain so that they remember your product. So that's going to be my take on it. Let me know what you guys think right down there in the comments section below. All right, guys, so this is the Hastur MTL RTA by Cthulhu Mods, and I just have to real quick give them a big shout out and thank you for allowing me to take a look at this device for the purpose of making this video. And yeah, we've got ourselves a mouth to lung RTA, very classy kind of styling here, very nice looking RTA, and performance is very good as well. So this device comes in two different color options for you guys to choose from out there. You've got the stainless steel version like I have here, and a black version as well, and it's going to run you about 35 bucks online, which is an absolute deal if you ask me. It has has that really nice high-end sort of feel to it and look to it, but you don't have to pay the top dollar price tag. So with that, I'll leave a link right down there in the description below if you guys want to pick one up for yourself. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive down to the close-up view and take a better look at this thing. All right, guys, so as you can see, we've got the Haster MTL RTA in its original box. So let's quickly take a look around the packaging and then we'll talk about what is inside. So first and foremost, love the display box. Really, I gotta say, this display box is super duper classy and just funky looking because it's got this kind of like canvas texture on the front here, on the sides, it's kind of that like velvety feeling. And wow, I'm just really kind of blown away by how cool this box looks. But uh, other than that, yeah, you have the little, uh, Cthulhu badge right there on the front, uh, Haster MTL RTA, nothing on the sides or front or back or anything like that. On the back of the package, we have uh, some basic details about it, you know, uh, what it's meant for, what it comes with, and the designer right there, who is Brian N. from California, USA. We also have a scratch-off authentication, this little Cthulhu Mods logo, and uh, UPC right there. Anyways, watch this, guys. Ready? Boom. Look at that. So it's kind of got that ring box sort of thing going on, that hinge that springs back. So let's just go ahead and take a look at our paperwork real quick. It comes with a tiny, tiny, tiny basic little fold out. I, I couldn't even really call that an instruction manual, really. It's barely, barely even a quick start guide. It's just a couple little pictures and diagrams. Not very wordy, uh, nice graphics on there, but it doesn't really help all that much. You're also gonna get a frosted glass piece in the box as well. Nice that they give you that, uh, just so you can change up the look a little bit if you wanted to. Of course, the Haster itself, which we'll be taking a little bit better look at in just a second here. We have our obligatory bag of parts, and these also contain the little airflow restrictor kind of screw things. Uh, we have a spare set of screws, some spare O-rings, looks like a full set in there, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much your standard obligatory bag of parts. We have a little tool. Now this is not only a screwdriver, but you can also wrap your coils around this as well, so I feel like it's kind of a dual purpose thing, which is kind of a nice touch, and actually, maybe this will help us get this little mouthpiece out. Urgh. There we go. So, it comes with another Ultem drip tip here. There we go, you can see this is the wider bore one. We'll take a closer look at this in just a second, but it does come with two of these Ultem drip tips. Very dark, dark Ultem. And that's what you get inside the box. All right, guys, let's talk about the specs. First of all, it's 24 millimeters in diameter. It holds four mils of juice, superior 304 stainless steel construction, Pyrex glass reinforcement with optional frosted glass, Jenny inspired apparatus, elevated chamber, unique two post design with single coil configuration, two Two millimeter diameter open terminal posts, top secured via slotted screws, deck milled negative post, peak insulated positive post, dual slotted bottom airflow, five swappable airflow resistors, one millimeter, 1.6 millimeter, two millimeter, 2.5 millimeter, and 3.5 millimeter, 510 wide bore drip tip included as well as a 510 contact pin. 
All right, guys, so let's go from top to bottom with the Haster, starting off with this drip tip up top here. This is the narrower of the two bore drip tips that it comes with. This is probably only about a mil and a half or two millimeters in diameter for the center hole there, as you can see. And it's made of this very dark Ultem material. Uh, it also comes with another one. This is the wider of the two and no no difference in height or anything like that let's see here the difference right there is the bore so this one is probably about three three and a half millimeters or so i would say and uh you know obviously gives people the option to choose what they want to vape on whether they want a super restricted draw all the way through this device or they want something a little bit more airy next up is the top cap top fill section right here which has this big chunky block on it which your drip tip sits on top of and it's kind of uh, kind of obtrusive I would say it kind of sticks up and I really feel like they could have done something a little bit nicer for this top section there not a big fan of the chunkiness of this thing but with that uh, it has these little arrows right on the outside there you kind of line those up with the little slots on the outer section there and if you got it lined up just right, the top cap comes off and that's where you can fill this thing up. Uh, my main concern with this system is the fact that this metal piece right here is going to rub on these O-rings constantly. Whenever you're filling this thing and, you know, taking off this top cap section, it's going to be causing some wear and tear to go on with these O-rings at the top section. So uh, not sure how long those are actually going to last. We're probably going to have to put this thing to, through a proper torture test. But uh, with that, that kind of, uh, I don't know, feels a little bit old school to me. It doesn't really feel the greatest. And uh, when you have like that metal kind of crunching around the outside there, it doesn't feel as good. I would even prefer just normal kind of top fill with threads and stuff. But uh, hey, maybe that's just me. We have this little wave design pattern going around the outside the top cap uh, and it's kind of neat I guess it kind of fits with the whole kind of ocean theme with the whole Cthulhu thing and then you have the uh, barrel section here the chamber section has the little um, Cthulhu mods logo on it so that's kind of neat I really do like that it's a cute little guy right there <laughs> uh, the glass piece is very very nice and solid it feels like it should you know it doesn't feel cheap it doesn't feel like it's gonna break any second and it's on the thicker side as well so that's nice don't feel like that's uh, worth really complaining about at all. You have a slight chamfer inside this little chamber section here, which is great because it kind of draws the flavor straight towards the middle. And you have a fairly narrow bore in there as well, probably three, about three millimeters, I'm guessing. Um, looks to be on a, a bit on the narrower side there. So here's the build deck. And as you can see, I left my build in there for you guys to see. This is kind of my standard go-to mouth to lung build. It's a 26 gauge space coil around a two and a half millimeter bit. And it fits in there, no problem. I had really no trouble trapping that wire or anything like that. Usually with the thinner gauge wire, like 26 and 28, sometimes these things are hard to trap, but no complaints in that department whatsoever. I could wrangle my coil around in there a little bit and get it nice and centered. And I had no issue with it. So very nice open build space as well. You can probably build about three or three and a half millimeter coils if you so choose. So I took the build out so you guys can see how you change out these little restrictor plates here. It's fairly easy. I chose one of the smaller ones, but you know, if you wanted to switch that up, you just take this little flathead screwdriver that they give you and there's a little slot on the side. You just kind of lift up on it like that and it comes right out. So fairly simple. These are what the actual restrictor pieces look like themselves and just kind of little plates of metal and they have a little slot. Let me see if I can show you guys that. They have a little slot in the side which allows you to grip onto it with a screwdriver. So fairly simple. Um, the normal bore is actually on the wider side so I would highly recommend you use one of those restrictors if you want a tighter draw for mouth to lung. But I suppose if you left those out, you can get a little bit of a looser draw and direct to lung this thing if you wanted to. But otherwise, the wicking channels are, you know, not the greatest. I wish they had some sort of system where you could trap that cotton in there because with this system here, you end up getting cotton that kind of goes over your threads and it gets caught and then it just kind of pulls on it. So not too crazy about that personally, but... Uh, it's also lifted off the deck a little bit, as you can see here on the bottom of the tank. The deck is actually lifted up a little bit, so it's almost kind of closer to a GTA style rather than an RTA. So the bottom section here kind of matches the aesthetic of the top cap with a little wave design, as you can see. And I like that. It kind of brings the whole thing together. The airflow on the bottom here is decent. And like I said, you could take out this little plug section and get a direct-to-lung 
with this thing wide open. I really firmly believe that to be true as well as, you know, cut this thing off as much as you want. So you can really, 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 really customize the airflow with this one. And that's kind of the name of the game when it comes to mouth to lung vaping. It's kind of balancing the airflow straight from the bottom to the middle and the top as well. So, you know, you have this, this airflow control right here. We have the restrictors and we have the drip tips with the different bores on them. That all adds up to, you know, a good combination of airflow control. I mean, this thing is probably the most controllable airflow I've ever seen. So with that, uh, very nice smooth airflow control ring. No complaints about that. And it does have a stopper fully open and fully closed. And on the bottom here, we have Haster RTA and we have our serial number right there. 510 pin that does protrude ever so slightly if you did want to use this on a mech mod for some reason. Anyways guys, that about does it for this little close-up section. Let's go back to the main screen, have a quick vape on this thing, and we'll talk about it some more. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed the close-up section of the video. Now let's talk about my personal thoughts about this device, some pros, some cons, and whether or not it's worth purchasing. Starting off with the pros, and my first pro is that it's super easy to build. This thing could not be any easier. Literally, you just undo the screws, you slide one side of the coil in and trap it, you slide the other side of the coil in and you trap it. You might have to adjust it up or down just to suit your personal preferences, but that's about it. That's all the tuning you really have to do with this one here, and it can fit some of the larger builds. You could fit a three and a half millimeter coil in there if you wanted to. I usually go with either two and a half or three, but it's totally up to you. You can fit some exotic wire and it's just a pretty darn easy build deck to use. So with that, definitely a pro in my book. My second pro for this one is that it looks super duper classy. I absolutely love the styling of this thing. It's just very simple and classic, nice clean lines on here. And overall, it just has a classy feel to it. I would say it kind of looks like a high end device, but it doesn't come with the high end price tag. And my third and final pro for this device is that it's great for the hardcore mouth to lung fans. If you're someone that mouth to lung vapes all day, every day, then why not get yourself a Hastur MTL RTA? Because really, the price is definitely worth it. A lot of value for your money with this one here. And I gotta say, it's a decently performing device as well. All right, guys, so moving on to the cons. My first con is the top cap locking system it is a little bit on the janky side. I'm not a huge fan of moving something left and right on top of O-rings like that all the time because it's gonna eventually put some serious wear and tear on those parts and they're gonna have to be replaced. So as far as the locking mechanism, they really could have done a better job with it. I wish there was some threads in there so you could at the very least just unscrew this top section without it rubbing constantly on the fill port O-rings. And my second con is that it's a little bit overcomplicated and I feel like some people might get lost with all the different attachments for this one as far as the airflow goes. Personally, I'm going to say just kind of go with your gut and kind of go with what you feel is best and usually mouth to lung vapors are probably only going to use one anyways so they're going to kind of just install one and leave it there but with that they could have done something a little bit different with the airflow restriction system and I feel like it's just kind of halfway there. So my third and final con for this device is on the subjective side but it's the drip. Tip. I'm really not a huge fan of these super dark Ultem drip tips that this thing comes with. It comes with two different bore drip tips, which is really great. However, I just really wish they didn't do them in this really dark Ultem. It kind of looks like amber, and I'm just not a huge fan of Ultem to begin with. So yeah, this one definitely loses a couple of points in my book. However, it doesn't really affect their performance whatsoever. So at the end of the day, is this device worth purchasing? Would I go out of my way to pick one of these up if I didn't get this one in for a review? And I'm gonna say no for me personally, but I do recommend it for all you mouth to lung fans out there. So the reason I say no to this one for me personally is because most of the time I am a direct to lung vapor. I would say a good 90% of the time I do direct to lung vaping. I prefer it and this is more of a novelty for me personally. I do think it's a great system and it's really cheap too. So you guys should definitely check it out. If 
you want to pick one up for yourself, I'll leave a link right down there in the description below. But that about does it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. Don't forget to click that notification bell right next to the subscribe button if you want to be alerted whenever I upload videos. Also, leave me some comments in the box below. I'd love to hear your thoughts all about the Has Tour MTL RTA or anything else you guys want to discuss down there. Also, check out the advocacy and my social media links right down there in the description below. I've got a Patreon, guys. If you guys want to sign up and support me, that would be amazing. If not, no big deal. You can also donate a couple of bucks with the paypal.me link right down there in the description as well. But thank you guys so much for tuning in, and as always, vape on! But with a